Yo, welcome back guys, episode 14 with Casual Blade and Bevy. We've got Lewis Everux on tonight. Um, pleasure to have you on, mate. So, obviously there's a few questions in the pipeline that I want to ask you and things we'll talk about, but obviously we'd like to start it off and kick it off with a little bit of uh, background on yourself. So do you want to talk about where you started skating, where you grew up and who you skated with and inspirations, all that type of fucking bollocks that people like to hear. Yeah, man, definitely. So I born and bred in West London, um, was born about five minutes around the corner from PlayStation Bay 66. Now skated there, bit of a, um, I don't know, blessing and a curse, skating, having such a nice skate park around the corner from you. It's made me a bit of a precious skater, but we'll get onto that, I'm sure. Um, skated, started skating, I was uh, skateboarding when I was about 10 or 11 and my older brother was rollerblading, I went to the skate park and then I watched, I saw Joe Egan float oh. over the boxes in the old spine at PlayStation yeah. and it's just like, yeah, that's, that's a bit of me. Spent three months trying to ollie and kickflip and couldn't do shit and then put on a pair of blades and it kind of just stuck a little bit. And then um, I stopped, worst decision of my life, from about 13 to 22. Oh, well, yeah. I didn't realise there was that much of a big... Like, yeah, that's a yeah. stint, man. Well, yeah. I, I came back a bit before that, but then it was on and off. I had a girlfriend that was like nine years older than me and just ribbed the shit out of me for <laughs> being a little kid and going to the skate park. So that kind of put me off a little bit. And then we split up when I was about, yeah, 22, 23, and then been blading... Well, trying to blade two or three times a week since, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, uh, Chews Bay. Uh, Bay, Bay, yeah, they're they're far too often, mate. So yeah, being skating around. I mean, that London crew is it's a sick, sick group of guys. You know, Blake Bird. I'm not going to list them all. It's huge. I mean, I don't think that there is a session around the world that pulls in as many bladers on a weekly basis. I'm not sure. I mean. I've been living in Berlin for the last year, and before I left, there was we were getting thirty to forty, sometimes more, sometimes a few less. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know, he's not chatting shit here. No, no, so, that, well, I, I, oh, mate, it popped up, it popped off when you left. You fucked off, and suddenly the sessions got big again. Yeah, yeah everyone wanted to come in session that's because I was the session at the time. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone stopped and watched Lewis. <laughs> to, to be fair, I. I uh, I, I well, I'm based down in London when I work when I'm not working from home over in Brentford, uh, based down there at GSK, and so I've been to a couple of the Tues Bay like mm. more often than not because I, I tend to come home for the weekend. But yeah, like th them sessions are good, man. Like this is, there is good numbers and great level like different abilities and stuff as well. No one feels sort of out of place. So yeah, the, them sessions go off. Yeah, yeah. and also. Austin Pills yeah, for the yeah. London boys. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were coming on, so I had to pick up the pills. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, I, but that's one of the best things about it is that it's all different levels, standards. You've got Blake Bird and Sam Croft cruising around doing nut shit on a daily basis, and then you've got your beginners there that are just accepted straight from in, and it's one of the... I mean, those sessions is one of the things that made me understand how special the blading community is, and what where where the you know wherever you come from whoever you are if you've got wheels on your feet you can turn up there and people are delighted to see you even if they've never met you before it's just like a it's a yeah no, I, I agree with that man that was the um that was the one thing that i really did love about living in london um was that literally like i didn't know everybody to begin with like yourself and, you know you've probably heard of each other through social media but then like yeah actually like meeting each other and skating like you know a lot of people some people are, are held back to to be honest you know like I mean? you know i, I feel like I, i'm quite sort of in tune with a lot of the scenes in the uk from social media and stuff and mm. london was one of them i, I kind of i probably haven't took advantage enough of going to them sort of sessions because there was a little bit of a not a divide as such but like you do kind of when you come from your own skate park and you have your own sort of click and how, how you kind of roll you know like people you you knock about with regularly 
yeah, it can, it can be a bit daunting to, to turn up to them yeah. sessions, but it is good to no, see. Like you, you do do like you do get that uh, that feeling of welcomeness when you yeah, turn up to them sessions. Definitely, definitely. Like, and, you know, like a, like I was saying, like all these guys that I when I moved to London, you know, like Ross, Ross Martin, Matt Collins, they opened their arms to me straight away. And it was like fucking hell. And then I started skating with everyone else, like yourself. Um, started skating with like um, Humphreys, Sam Croft, Blake Bird. Um, you know, there was even like not big names. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They're all fucking open arms. Like, and you know, it's I hate I hate that I hate that thing of like southern thing where people are like, oh, southerners fucking nutbeds. Like, <laughs> yeah, and it, fucking stuff up their arms. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of that that goes around where people think, you know, some of them are. I'm not going to lie. Some of them are fucking downright arrogant knobheads. But when it comes to rollerblading community in, in London, it's so different. They're all just fucking there. And if you're a rollerblader, you're involved in that fucking little crew, which yeah. is nice. So just to say thank you to you, mate, I appreciate that from when I first, like, first started coming to skating with you guys in London and you opened your arms. Big loss to the sessions. Big, big, big loss. Uh, I do miss it. I do miss it. They, they don't miss you. No, that's no. wow. <laughs> <laughs> so go on, carry on. Oh, we, we like to interrupt you. You'll understand that. We like to uh, take you off track and fucking pull you aside for a second. But yeah, swing it back. <laughs> yeah, so where was that? Um, yeah, basically that scene, so as I said, a bit of a blessing and a curse. Skating Bay being around the corner from my... Like from my yard, I uh, am a quite precious blader. If it's not nice, smooth concrete and or wood, I spend a lot of time. You know, growing up on a the old half pipe of PlayStation was the best pipe you'll ever, best ramp you'll ever skate. But it was super smooth. And if I'm on a trick and I have a twenty percent chance of coming off, I'm going sliding because I know it's safe. And then you go out to the streets or to a slightly more rugged skate park like I had out in Berlin, and you realise that sliding out isn't the best option and it's so I kind of wish that I'd had slightly more rugged um, spots to skate when I was younger and didn't just have Bay always around the corner from me. Um, but I, I, do, I do understand that Lewis but then at the same time you grow to love that smooth sliding, you grow to love not fucking getting that concrete burn on your arse crack. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, that's the issue. Because you because you get to know the slide and the rub. If you if you're used to a concrete park, you're used to trying to stay on your feet no matter what. If you're used to a wooden park, you're just I get that sliding out, good to go. Yeah, and a lot of people who know me through skating know that I'm good at taking a fucking hard bail and getting back up and trying again. Right, but I, I am terrified of street. And we literally just spoke with Greg about this, and you know, <laughs> I. Every time, obviously now I live up in Preston Way, so I'm around the corner from Brad. Me and Brad are literally like five minute walk from each other's house. Um, we skate together majority of the time. Yep. And a lot of the time with this fucking lockdown shit going on, mate, like it's street skating. <laughs> I, you know, we'll come to like, he took us this rail. I don't know if you saw the clip of me doing that, that white rail, the top acid down the rail. That, that clip does not give that rail justice, mate. Like, it was a gnarly fucking rail. And it looked it, mate. I put my skates on. I, there was a guy who was our friend. We're naming him because I don't want to shame him. Um, <laughs> he was eyeing up for 20 minutes. And I was like, I just stood at the top and I went, fuck it. I put my skates on. Um, jumped up at first. Fell, fell the first time, like, down the grass bank. And then just did it three times in a row to get the clip. Um, but... Basically, what you're trying to say is Mark Nichols is a pussy. Give it a like because he's very keen to get What you what you're trying to say is Lewis owns big boy pants, but he doesn't like putting them on. No, That's yeah. all it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, much. To be but fair, going back to that Lewis, it's the reason why I don't put like put my big boy pants on is because I've had that lovely soft wood. That lovely polished wood where yeah, you don't I, know how good it. I glide on my bum and it's fabulous. Like I've got no pain, nothing. But no, I do understand like that going to uh, where were you living when you said was it Germany? Do you say? 
I've been out in Berlin for the last year, yeah. Um, which was yeah, like, so a whole new experience of skating and that very much not smooth would Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine, mate, I can imagine. So is it was it just mainly outdoor parks that you're skating there? Mainly outdoor. They've got one park. They've got the in um, Friedrichstein, but it's skateboarder only. It's a Nike SB run that's indoor, yeah. and then yeah. and they've got a little. They've got an indoor section to the Mellow Park where they did the last Summer Clash, but it's tiny and a bit shit. So we had a, a Tuesday session, and that's the um, that's like the the Van Skate Park as well in London, isn't it? That, and, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and it's. Uh, did, you, did you ever get it? Did you, oh, little isms. Did you ever get an opportunity to go there? Uh, what the vans in London? Mm. No, I've never skated that. You want to know a funny story? So when I, when I worked for vans in London, um, they gave us the option to go, and obviously a lot of guys that I worked with at the time were skateboarders, hmm. um, and so I said to the guys who asked us to go to the van skate park you know, a role player. They were like, yeah, but you work with vans, fuck it. So I actually got to skate the van skate park. Did you? In roll Did you yeah. wax, it, did wax it up? Fucking I wasn't it. allowed. <laughs> I wasn't allowed. I'm not going to lie. Um, I wasn't allowed. Um, Disgusting. I just got allowed to flow around the park, which, you know what? At the time, it was like, I'm just with work colleagues. It's nothing I need to fucking impress people about. It's nothing I need to do anything crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Rollerblading, Lewis. You should have gone down hammers. I, I should have put it all on Instagram. That's what I should have done. That, that, that would have sent him that would have went off. Yeah. Do, you know what, though? Do you know what, with the whole Nike sponsoring, I know they're, they're, they're slightly moving out the game of sponsoring skate parks at the moment, but I'm not, I just, this whole like, exclusivity and it being skateboard only, I, I'm not, it's not, you, you mentioned it on the Tom Barrio podcast of the, the weasel face and the beef that's kind yeah. of re emerging between skating and rollerblading and the homophobic side of skateboarding and yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's for me skating is you go to a skate park and whatever obstacle or whatever thing you're riding whether it be a scooter a skateboard bmx what, what like wheelchairs you see some people ripping it up that and that it's you're all using the same thing that to exclude someone for it is for me the total opposite of why skate parks are a thing and what they're about and absolutely i don't yeah. feel to want to at the same time though at the same time though look, um it's strange because i generally feel like well without like fucking burning bridges or causing any grief or anything like that it's nothing offensive to anyone who reached out to this guy because i reached out to this guy as well ah oh, that's right i can still see us i like that could you tell <laughs> He's not looking good. Okay, that's not my um, So it's one of them where it was like, now I think about it, and I think I sent that message, but I didn't send a message in a nasty way. I just said, like, if you want to be involved or people want to be, you know, in a way, like, just don't be a bell end. Everybody's human. Yeah. Um, uh, for, yeah, that, that, that touches on, like, what, what everyone's been saying about but it. But then it's at just... the same time, but then at the same time, this guy has got a valid point. It was over six years ago. And yeah, he might have done it in a, in a way of like being a dickhead or he might have done it in a way of like, because he doesn't like rollerbladers, but they're the same. Like just fucking, who cares? Get over it. Yeah, I totally get your point of view, but at the same time, it, it is he's voicing and airing opinions that are in a current modern day environment now very like incorrect politically but, correct but modern day environment but are we not talking six years ago well yeah but, this so is the media at the moment is bringing up stuff that has occurred yeah you know and it, it does need bringing up and, and addressing and, and fair play to the people who either reached out to him or you know like the ones who brought it to the attention that it's not cool to be a fucking dickhead. Yeah, it's, like, it's not. I'm not it's disagreeing not, with no, that. No, no. Yeah, but I know it was six years ago, and we cannot. We can all try and move past it. But at the same time, this is episode fourteen, and it's Lewis. Um, it's not about you. Mm. So can we get back to hearing? Why is he being horrible? <laughs> <laughs> One, point on that. One point on that. I, Fully respect the people calling out that weasel face, or you know, for whatever he's been drawing, whatever. I don't see yeah. the need to post your calling out on social media to make the, 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 the guy. 
become a become more of a thing than just saying I don't really agree with what you're doing. Please take it down. Yeah. It's to make Absolutely. the whole part, yeah, yeah, yeah. dropping down to levels that we're calling him out for. Yeah, no, I think that's the thing that's kind of like got my back up against it now. Is like you don't need to publicly shame somebody. No, for, no, you, you, could, you, you could definitely drop in the DM and just be like, yeah. oh, man, it's probably not cool. Yeah, and let, let, let's kind of move past it. And it looks like from some of the stuff he's like, he has kind of said, like, yeah, it was six years ago. I kind of have different views about it now. So that's what I'm saying. Like, so people people do wrong with me. Yeah, yeah. I've done it. I've done it. Let's not beat around the bush. Let's not beat around the bush. That guy's a dickhead. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't play the Have you heard him play the banjo? What's that? Sorry. Yeah, I didn't play his banjo. I've not heard him play his banjo. Well, he plays banjo really well. No. Oh, you, <laughs> you, you, you've given him more time than he deserves. I have. Been. Right. Anyway, before, uh, before, this point, just before you move it on, Brad, I just want to make just, just I don't know my two pence on the blading scene now hating on the scootering scene and yeah, the yeah, coming, yeah. The coming kind of like now. now. It's it's massive. You see these little kids. I mean. The majority of kids skating in London are on a scooter or in skate parks are on a scooter. And I see a lot of people shouting them out, telling them that scootering's this and scootering's that. And, you know, um, instant, well, just by what they choose to be doing. And I think the skating scene needs to realise that actually these kids are the next generation of rollerbladers if we take them under our wing, show them what's what, give them a pair of skates to skate with. Don't banish them for being on a scooter. Yes, they snake you and they're fucking annoying. I'm not saying that they're not annoying, but speak to them like human beings. Don't shout them. Take them aside and say, look, explain the rotation of a skate park. Say, do you want to go on my skates? Don't vindicate them and, and beat on them. For who they're, Absolutely. Who they're. And going back to the, the chat we had with Tom, uh, that was always our issue with BMXers. Um, the, the, the issue BMXers had with us at the time where I grew up was we were essentially what scooter kids are now. We were cutting people up. We weren't, you know, the park etiquette wasn't there, you know, we were early days. And yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for them kind of, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, a good grilling every now and again doesn't go amiss because at the same time that kind of brings you down to earth and you think, shit, I won't do that again. But at the same time, you do need that kind of uh, reassurance and, uh, you know, you take it under your wing. If Put it this way, if a BMX would have took me under his wing and said, look, what you're doing is not cool, but you you know, you know, like, you could have a go on this bike, I, like, ah, I probably would have given it a go. And we could definitely, you know, tap into that uh, scooter scene, especially, you know, the, the younger scooter ones who, who haven't really kind of... That, that etiquette, that, that foundation, that, you know, that, that, that's a that's an open market. Yeah. If you need to be having a word with someone, have a word with their parents that's watching them be dangerous to themselves yeah. in the skate park by not stopping. Yeah. But at the same time, I will, I, will, I will agree with what Lewis is saying um, because rollerbladers, a lot of rollerbladers don't realise. I managed Ramp Work Skate Park for two years yeah. and if it wasn't for the income from scooter kids and their mums coming in and paying for weekly passes yeah. and buying scooter products, that park wouldn't be what it is now. That park would probably not even be open. Yeah, yeah, and I absolutely get that and I get that side of it and I wholeheartedly agree. Like that, that, yeah, you know, that they're, side, they're, they're, they're putting money into an industry that they're not even associated to, essentially. You know, they're, they're putting it into skate parks that everyone uses, so fair play. If you can convert one in ten scooter kids to trying blading, it's way more fun than scootering. I mean, we all know that. Obviously, we're on this podcast for this very yeah. reason. But if you can get one of them to put on a pair of blades three weeks in a row, you've got an, you've got a new blader. He then gets two of his friends to start blading. That's that's that becomes a crew that will be skating for twenty years later. I always take I always take scooter kids aside, and don't get me wrong, I'm prone to a little outburst and a fuck you, get out of the way, you snake me, or I, you know, I'm not I'm not in any way trying to say that I'm perfect. But taking aside from explain to them that they will be hopefully in the skate park or around skate park culture for the next 20 plus years of their life give everything a go try skateboarding try bmxing try blading you know you're in this for a long haul decide what you want to do and then settle on it and give them the opportunity of trying something out new that they might settle on and then one in ten will convert and that's our next generation that brings like us on nicely. Uh, you know, 
that next generation to kind of, you know, one of the things you're pushing at the moment, and that is the the, the new business, and that is bringing kids in to, to skate and, you know, the, what, what you've started down in London. Uh, and, you know, who better to tell us about it than yourself? But well, te- how, how would you like to introduce that? Would you like to call it by... Well, you tell me the name. Skate and Create. Skate to Create. So go on, tell us about Skate to Create. So, as I, as I think I've been saying, I'm a big believer in the social benefits of skating and what being part of a community and having a hobby can do to everything outside of skating as well and the benefits of social or confidence and, yeah, um, just, I don't know, being, having a hobby. I'm very blessed to have a hobby. I'm, I'm delighted that in my life when I think about anything other than making money, I have a deep passion. I have friends of mine that, you know, getting by in life and whatever, they, their passion can be going to the pub and drinking with mates. There's, not, there's nothing that fills their time. And for me, having that passion has really dr- led and built to a lot of things in my life. So I'm in the process of starting a free skate school where we're going to be running skate lessons out of basics for six. Well, I mean, unofficially yet, I'm pretty confident that we will sort out um, the, we'll sign the deal to, for it to happen. We'll see COVID wise and stuff, but um, starting a skate school where they get free skate hire, skate, like all skate equipment, skate lessons and um, skate park entry. So it's completely free of entry. Um, and if they sort of complete a certain amount of the course or show real passion in it, then they get given the pair of blades at the end of the six month program that we're running. Oh. We're hoping or looking, I'm, I'm connecting with two really amazing charities in the area um, and trying to work with kids that I really, I hate this term. I think it's quite derogatory, but like at risk of gang membership. So yes. Siblings of, um, known gang members and excluded kids and kids from single parent homes. So trying to get them hooked from the age of sort of eight to 11, eight to 12 is what we're looking at. And in the belief that if they put on a pair of skates now and join a community, see that. So we're, we're running it on the Thursdays. So the hope is that they'll skate with us lesson wise, four till six. Suddenly everyone starts coming in an hour later, see what the session is, see the vibes, enjoy the people be around that, become part of the community quite quickly, and that then ignite a passion and, yeah, give them something to live and dream and breathe for the rest of their life, and that potentially being a diversion. I mean, you know, look, I, I make no pretenses. I'm not from a background that understands um, what it's like to see gang life as one of very few options. I, I come from a background of, of many opportunities. So I, 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 it, it's a bit of an experiment at the moment, but I'm a real believer that skating can... Um... I, I kind of see that as like, you know, <clears throat> growing up in London um, and also seeing a community in London and also where your local park is in London, mate, is in the best area. You know, and there are a lot of kids knocking around that could have a potentially better future in their life. You know, and it sounds it sounds a cliche, but rollerblading for a lot of people, even though it's not like some big fucking like step for some people, has helped them in their in their lives massively. And you know, it's not even just like rollerblading, just being around that scene, being around them types of people. Has helped a lot of people's opportunities, career, like their life decisions massively. To be honest, like th- this kind of hits home with me a, a, a bit because not for my family upbringing or anything like that, uh, but I used to work in care homes for children with challenging behavior. So, I mean, th- there was, there was a couple of kids who would have autism, you know, like, like, disabilities that side of things but probably 70 percent of it was kids from homes who kids have been taken into care essentially uh, and this kind of thing is invaluable like yeah. there's, there's, there's no way of like putting a price on the kind of thing you're offering now 
because I, I know from seeing it firsthand, uh, particularly with what one kid who was really uh, keen on scootering at the time when I was, was working in the home, that this kind of uh, vocation, this kind of opportunity that you, you're offering, especially with a skate park like Bay 66. I mean, we, we used to go to some outdoor skate parks, you know, council-owned ones, even, you know, like the really shitty tin ones, you know, like anything just to give that kid an opportunity to see life outside of, of drugs and alcohol and crime and anything basically that was a negative influence on his life. And you will not believe the effect that that kind of uh, opportunity would have on a, on a child, especially a child coming from a home that doesn't have that support network that, I personally feel rollerblading offers. Well, yeah, no, I... Uh, I mean, we, we did touch on it, you know, yeah, with, yeah. with uh, the chat with, with Devereaux. And, uh, I agree, I agree. And I, I honestly, I, I can't stress enough, you know, people who listen to this this podcast, you know, probably bladers already. So, you know, but if anyone can, you know, share this chat to, to you know, world, like, as, as far as they can get it, because I, I don't believe parents and, you know, social workers, anyone like that who has that sort of influence on a child understands the positive effects that aggressive sports can have, regardless of if it's uh, skateboarding, scooter, BMX, rollerblading. Hell, you know, you even mentioned it before, like wheelchair. So, you know, there's so many different aspects of, is, of aggressive but... sports and they've got positive Outlooks on everyone. It's really sad to say. It's really sad to say. Um, but when I sit there and I listen to you talk about that, and I listen to Lewis talk about like his thing, and I think to myself, I think fucking hell, like listening to you, listening to it was like for myself. Mm. In all honesty, for myself, if I wasn't rollerblading at the age of like. 10, 13, I don't even now sit here and I think to myself, what the fuck would I have been doing? Yeah, I mean, and like, and I come from a, you know, not, not a, a well to do family, but at the same time, I had solid opportunities. I could have done many other things, but at the same time, I struggled with weight issues as a kid rollerblading for me not only introduced me to the the social side of interacting with other people and you know that that side of things but like the health benefits that it brings and the mental health benefits that it brings especially at this point in times like you, you'll know you, yourself by wanting to start it and any research you've done it, it it's immeasurable like yeah. you can't really put a, a figure get, on it I get what you're saying so the benefit, benefits of skating go far and beyond just Absolutely. landing tricks. I mean, yeah, for me, yeah, yeah. Total meditation, you know, like have recently dipped into the want to try and meditate and get into a more spiritual setting didn't really work. But, you know, and a lot of that exploratory pathways is about trying to just be in your own mind. If you're about to go do a top sold and a half pipe, you're not thinking about anything else. Yeah, absolutely. You're on that. And that, for me, is a is the, the mental benefit. It's a meditation for me, skating. Yeah, you're in and around your mates. You're, you know, there's distractions, there's music. But really, when you're skating, you are locked in. You are, you, you, you are. It's one yeah, very yeah, 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 absolutely. It's such a relief. It's crazy, it's crazy because you know you, a lot of people do get these releases, and I've never. I enjoy session, and then I hate sessions. But don't get that release. See, I think it's more of a subconscious thing. You, you, you know, you, a lot of the times you, you're doing a trick and you, you, you're you thinking about a trick and you, mm. you're not really kind of giving it the attention it deserves because it kind of comes naturally or you, you've done it for that yeah. long. But that, them first couple of sessions, you, you know, like imagine your first sole, your first front slide, any, any first where you're completely zoned in and I, I completely agree with what you're saying. It's, well, yeah... Perfect. That's another huge thing with it is that it's in a in a world where now kids are very much graded by school results, what they do, you know, they, they have a, every six months, they have something that tells them how good they are and how, how, and it's always within a curriculum or not something that they can judge themselves. Skating is a, an ability to say, right, I set myself, to, I want, I finished this session doing a soul. 
yes. smash yourself five or six times doing it, get back up, do it. You can register your, to yourself that self-improvement. What that does for your own self-worth is beyond measurable. Yeah. And then on top of that, you get a little clap, you get a little slap tap. The skating, what I love about the skating community is if I can do a soul with my eyes closed on, you know, a two inch ledge is what yeah. that's what I'm skating on. But, um, and then I see someone trying it five or six times, they land it, boom, yes, big yeah. up. It doesn't Absolutely. matter what your skill level is, you, you can appreciate what the other person's skill level is. And yeah. what that does for their own self-confidence is, goes beyond anything. Just quickly as well, that, so with, on that communications level, I, I volunteer for a charity called The Big Change. And they look at education and um, different sorts of education. And one of their main things is trying to encourage students to use more words and speak more. The average student from a state school in the UK says 270 words a week. Imagine that. We that, that in the classroom, sorry, in the classroom. So that, so that is, so that is the majority. That's and that probably comes from two or three kids sat at the front doing all the speaking. Yeah, kids go through their entire day not using their voice box and, and or having anything to speak about because they feel, I don't know, uh, not not enthused or energized by what they're learning about. Suddenly you're in the skate park, you're in and around. I don't know. We're all old men now, so like forty year olds to. 22 year olds really that's probably the youngest bladers in and around london you're communicating with people from very different levels different educations different backgrounds different religions you're talking about a common goal and just opening up and being able to talk about something and having something to talk about oh, triggers and wires your brain and fixes bits in your brain that we as people that are able to speak and come you know not able to speak but you know are eloquent and speak a bit yeah you can't measure the benefit of that having a common goal that you can talk to people about is i'm it? just going to turn on the light, but at the same time uh i want to fire a question your way uh have you, you do have you reached out <laughs> Chub, have you reached out to uh alex burston at all because i know he's doing a similar thing uh around the manchester area with uh the project skate park i'm just going to turn the light uh, yeah. um Quickly, I'll just quickly big up Alex Burston. Big, big imprint. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll make no um, no attempt to hide the fact that I idolise that guy highly. I, uh, I hold him in high regard. I haven't Is that reached out to him. Your hair, grew the tash, <laughs> <a little> bit. <laughs> the tash, the tash. If this wasn't such last minute, the tash would have been gone. But um, porno scenes you've been doing. <laughs> 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 I'm, worry. I'm, every, I'm not laugh because it was getting really deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every minute, minute, everybody yeah. seems to get ripped at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there you yeah. Go. I'm, I'm glad that came up. I'm glad you're ripping me on the tag. Well into this, like yeah, yeah, on a yeah. personal <laughs> level. So yeah, oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. So Alex, big idol in my life. I know he's going through a lot, so I haven't reached out to him. Definitely top of my list of people that I will be getting in touch with. And if I'm totally honest, my, my dream with Skate to Create is start in London create a package and a funding strategy that then can you know i can find people in manchester liverpool all all around the uk that can take a, a package i can hopefully deliver a load of skates find someone that is willing to take it on and then do very similar i i'm talking way in advance here you know yeah 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 what i did all of this was um so obviously me growing up as a kid if i didn't have rollerblading um you were looking at I'd probably be in prison. Um there wasn't a lot of opportunities around my ways for with rollerblading you're lucky to not be in prison. Yeah, definitely. Definitely because like I had a hobby and I had an interest of yeah. doing something that wasn't fucking robbing cars, wasn't burgling people's houses, wasn't doing the things that you know you're gonna get in trouble for. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It didn't matter what it was, as long as it wasn't Getting myself in trouble. Don't get me wrong. As a kid, I was a little shit. Please write my mum's door. But it wasn't anything fucking serious. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it could have been. Do you, know yeah. you know what the number one response from youth offenders that are gang affiliated is of why, when they're asked, why did you commit this crime? They answer, well, what else is there to do? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get at is that like what you're doing right now I know, I understand you, you've been brought up in a lot of a better background, a lot of a, you know, I, I get that, but then at the same time, it's not like you're doing it. You're not doing it because 
you want to be this guy that's like, oh, look at me. I've, I've worked in this yeah, background yeah. and I help you. I've you sit. I've sit. You, know, you know that the community that hasn't got the, the opportunities that you've got deserve the opportunities yeah. that you, you also deserve in life. And I, I think it's a great point of view. Sorry, I come from a point of view of, like, I come from a background of lots of opportunities and, you know, it's been as easy as it gets really for a kid in London and I've felt the benefits and the positive reinforcements of being part of the skating community and, and it's yeah. something that I'm deeply passionate about. So someone that doesn't quite have the opportunities that I've got, they're going to feel the extra benefit of rollerblading tenfold. Yes. So I've made this much, someone that doesn't have as much is going to feel it way more and that's, that's a driving motivation for me. Yeah, um, what, what I'd like to express massively is obviously, you know, people who listen to the podcast and, you know, people that appreciate the understanding for rollerblading because the podcast obviously was made for current lockdown situations to stop people going insane, for people who are part of the UK blame scene or across the world, it doesn't really matter. Just anybody that needs to open up and talk to us, it's there for you as a, as a platform to get involved. But as I say that, you know, Lewis is putting out a massive, massive opportunity for a lot of people um, in London at the moment. And, you know, obviously in the future, it'll be spread. That's the, the outcome and the goal for it, for, yep. it to, for it to grow and to become something that's an, an, official, an official thing where, you know, people are seeing this um, group. Uh, create, to, uh, create as a massive opportunity to be involved in but at the same time you've got to understand guys that this isn't an easy thing to come across this is an easy thing to, to start up as you know rollerblading isn't a massive um, sport in the industry and you know at the same time Lewis is looking for that little bit of help he might say he's got a great background and he might say he's got a lot of things going on in his life which has been an opportunity for him but then at the same time, Lewis is also a human being where he also needs that extra help. So if you guys ever feel like you have got a pair of rollerblades just sitting there, you know, they're not doing anything and you don't want to do anything with them, yeah. but you think, I could sell them for 30 quid, fuck the 30 quid, help a guy out, help a kid out, because that's what you're doing at the end of the day. It doesn't go to Lewis, it goes to a child, and it goes to a kid who could benefit from this opportunity a lot more than you're going to benefit from £30. Yeah, absolutely. Like you, can, you can't drive that home enough. It's not a case of, you know, oh, I'm sending this guy skates, you know, like, yeah. oh, maybe you'll go on session. He's not going to do that, you know what I mean? Like it, it's for one goal and one goal only, and that is to get people in, involved in skating and then on top of that, you get the social benefits, um, you yeah. know, the physical yeah, and mental exactly. benefits. That, that... It, you know, I think the the UK scene, especially. I mean, I don't know if they've done this uh, in other countries. Uh, you might have researched it yourself, whether it's been done in the US and stuff like that. But I mean, for the UK, especially the way things are at the moment, with you know such a, an impetus on mental health in the UK, mm -hmm. th this thing is needed for me personally more, more than a lot of a lot of charities that are already running. Uh, this, this is something that could really snowball into something great. Well, that's why I also I don't I don't think a lot of people from the UK scene or across the world understand that what Lewis is trying to create is a charity run based on what he's after yeah. at the moment to try and help that. Like he said at the end of the the whole course of what somebody's going through, they're going to receive uh, a free pair of skates, um, which you know. I, could, I just, you jump in on there, Louis, Lewis. You, you kind of said that better than I ever could, but I haven't actually really explained to the other than a few posts in UKBC of what I am running this charity from a donations base. I've got a couple of hookups. So Connor Manweller at Celtic hooked me up with a couple of pairs of kiddie skates with the adjustable sizes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seeing them, yeah, yeah. Um, shout yeah. out to Celtic. Well done, guys. Shout out, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Timing to deal with as well. Didn't no second guessing, straight on it at cost price, bang like that for the kids for a charity. Huge respect for that. But what, as I said, what I'm hoping for is, and and blown away by the response from the from the community already. There's been, you know, I've had a package or two. Yeah, uh, yeah. Massive shout out to everyone that's already donated. But a lot of people have said, well, I'm not sure if you really want this or. Basically, I'm gonna, if it's still skatable, I don't want anything that's 
completely wrecked beyond belief that is worth the bin. But if it's still skatable, I'm after anything and everything you've got. I'll cover postage at the moment. But um, yeah, basically, if you can send me some bits or if you've got some, got anything to donate, it's going to a really good cause. As I say, it's not just building an archive of or, or you know a bit of 20 skates. We, I'm I'm going to be doing this for a long time. So if you've ever got anything you can give that would be great and I, what I really actually want to segue into this I, I'm always a bit uncomfortable actually speaking and asking for people to give their things but um, as I say you said it better than I could have done is that on top of the what I'd quite like to do is we sort of talked about the benefits of skating and what the main focus of the skate school is but actually with the charity there's quite a few other branches that we're developing and one of them is doing donations out to the developing world um so anything that's not used for the skate school um i'm setting up a sort of donations link out to uh, we're starting with morocco where our intention isn't just to um you know drop a box of skates in and then leave it is to run a competition when we drop the skates off then run another competition a year or two later and see the development. I'm a documentary filmmaker, so there'll be some documenting of it going on as well. So there's these sort of programs outside of just the skate school. You know, I've had a few people being like, you know, I've seen you've got this, so do you really need what I've got? And I'm, and this is sort of an appeal to say, I'll, I'll, I'll take anything because I want to be donating to all well, over the world. And really this is an opportunity for, um, yeah, budding, skate scenes everywhere yeah like i i get what you're saying there. and like people saying like oh you've got this would you really need this like that's to me pal me that's like a fucking really really dickhead way of looking at I it. Get it i get it it's like oh well you've probably already got two size nine you yeah really i get what you're saying I but at the same time at the same time you may have five people to begin with right and you've got them five rollerblades for them kids next week you've got 10 kids Four of them are fucking size nine. Yeah. yeah. You've got four, but you've only got four pairs of nine, size nines. So what you do for that first, like, two hours, you share them between six, seven people. And in times like, of COVID, that's not... Yeah, easy. Like, what you're trying to do, like, I, I, get, I get what you're saying there, like, with people saying that, but at the same time, I see it as that, like, if somebody if somebody's going to benefit from something that you're not fucking using yeah. or you have no intention of ever using all you're thinking about is putting a bit of more money in your pocket when realistically you don't need that fucking money yeah, but, but you're also not jump on it's hard times no, no, no. No, I'm not I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not at the same time I'm not at the same time but I, I also I also want to address them though is that Everybody in the rollerblading community should understand that you have got one friend that you skate with who is always going to be your friend and they will always look out for you. If you need a pair of wheels, you need a pair of laces because you've snapped them. You've always got that one friend that will help you out. And I think what you're doing, you are that one friend. Just to a whole, a whole host kids. of people. Yeah. And all these other kids are going to look at you and go, he's that guy that's going to help me. Yeah. But then at the same time, you are part of a rollerblading community that is massive at the end of the day, massive. And they all should see this as an opportunity to help out the rest of the rollerblading community. I'd, to be honest, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to think that that's the way it is. Yeah, just, just, just quickly, absolutely blown away by the response as well. You know, um, people that I've never spoken to, never skated with, have a social media presence or just are on UKBC have been messaging me and it, it's it, it for me it's been a real enforcement of what i'm doing of how many people have said oh, i've got some bits whether it's a set of wheels or you know georgie wilson sent me two full sets yeah up. yeah see, yeah and, like, you know that, that matt matt collins has got a couple of setups for me you know that, that it's the reach has been wide it's not, there's not there's the odd few that have said well you've already got this so yeah yeah, yeah if not it's <laughs> It's not that I'm judging everybody as that person and that everybody is the same person. I, mate, I know, I, obviously, as you know, I know a lot of these rollerbladers and, you know, the people that you're talking about. And the, the thing is, they are, they are, them guys, 
understand it and they they see it for what it is and they see it as that it is a community and we're here to help each other and we're here for the love. It's not about fucking greed or fucking money or the rest of it. Yeah. And that gets me onto a point about the, the just sorry, I'm going to chew you ear no, off. No, 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 go for it. What other industry has no money behind it? Like, <laughs> n- n- like nothing in the world. Yeah. What we as rollerbladers, what there must be five, maybe 10 people that actually make a living off being a rollerblader. But yeah. for me, there's a lot of hate in the community about that. Oh, there's no money. And I get it. I've never been, I've never felt the effect of there being no money because I've never been let down by the industry. But as someone that is very interested in the community side of it, it's what makes it so special. We are all here because it's what we love. You see yeah. so many skateboarders that, that try and get pro, don't get pro, drop out because they didn't get their paycheck. And it's like, well, fuck it. How many skaters, now, how many OGs from back in the day are coming back that were being paid and now aren't being paid, but still love the sport. And you're like, that, that for me sells, well, sells the community massively, even though there's money behind it. I know it sells. Is it? Yeah, no, no, he, 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 you're absolutely on the money. And it's like, it's, it kind of touches on the point we, we've just spoke about with Greg. So Greg uh, currently runs Blade Life. And he's doing it. As much as he can, personally, you, you, if you've listened to all of them and you just listened to the Greg one uh, a couple of days ago, uh, he's doing his bit as he runs Blade Life to not just make money out of blading on merch. What he tries to do is promote the money he makes uh, and the money that comes in through Blade Life, he puts back into blading by either getting people, you know, overseas uh, for tours, flights, and stuff like that. You know, and he's got that that platform, that that opportunity because he started it, you know, six years ago now, and he's in a position where he can help out fellow bladers. And I'm sure, you know, myself included, like there's a lot of bladers who are in blading and they, they skate regularly who obviously do it, you know, it's, it's a hobby at the end of the day, but at the same time they have their full-time occupation. They can make, you know, relatively, you know, comfortable money to the point where, you know, a set of wheels here or there or, you know, an old pair of skates that are sat under the stairs ain't going to help no one else. You know what I mean? They're just going to sit there and don't get me wrong. You know, there's people who have collections and fair enough, you know, if, if a collection's your thing, collection's your thing. Yeah, but there's not many, there's different. not many. That's different though. That's yeah. Different. And at the same time, I mean, I, 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 before I, moved to yeah. on, I, I think all, Blade, that's part of the, part of the inspiration for what I wanted to do is all bladers have got an old setup or, yeah. an old yeah. setup or something that's not been, you know, how many of us are actually, Going oh, literally, anyone anyone who's skated for more than twelve months has something old sitting under the stairs that they don't use. In this day and age, in this day and age, two thousand, early two thousand, you'd have the one fucking pair of frames, the one set of wheels, yeah, one set exactly, of and you didn't have any fucking spares. If you had spares, it's because your mum fucking bought them for Christmas, and that was it. But them fucking spares were fucked, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like the ones now. And uh, like, we've all got to that age now where we're buying fucking frames exactly every fucking two months. You're buying liners, 160 pound pair of liners every fucking two months. You're buying skates as fucking as many times as you come. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not everyone. Don't get me wrong. No, not everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's what that's what we're I'm, saying. I'm but... in that category, Lewis. Like I'm in that category. I can't afford. And I'll be dead honest. Hold my hands up. I can't afford to be buying fucking new skates every six months anymore. I can't do it, mate. I've got a fucking house. I've got rent. I've got shit to pay for. Like and I can't do it. But then at the same time, but there are there are people. But then at the same time. I have shit in my house, which I've already spoken to you about, Lewis. It's fucking sat there doing nothing. Yeah, waiting, and I'm waiting happy, to go. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to send that shit away. And I'm not expecting. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want anyone to be putting in their pocket and taking, you know, spending where they don't need to be. It's the shit gathering dust that I yeah. put to do. Absolutely. This, this is, I understand what you're saying, but this is what we are talking about. We're not talking about like, you know, people saying to you, oh, Lewis, you know, you're doing a great thing. Here's a hundred pound donation. Cause I know that's not what you're after. Yeah. Right. You're after. It did happen. Right. Who, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. I wait. love pair of fucking frames. Wait there you minute. go. Take them. One minute. Do you know what I mean? I'm not using them. As, as Brad was saying, Lewis, 
who was it that, that threw down the uh, the hundred pound donation? Because shout out to them. Big shout out to Luke uh, Shendrick. I think I'm saying his name right. He's Lucas Matthew on um, Instagram, but following following for that alone. A handful of times, maybe 10, 12 times, messaged me out of the blue saying, Luke, love what you're Luke. doing, don't have any gear, but have you got a PayPal that I can make a donation to? And as I'm saying, man, too much, too many thanks for that. The the paperwork and the and the bureaucracy needed to do the grants and the funding that I'm trying to do that helped me beyond belief. I'm, yeah. you know. So so stemming away from the the donation side of it, which obviously we're all appreciative of, um, you know, we we can't stress enough how much that that makes a difference to what you're doing. Uh, the the grant side of things, so like the government side of things. Can you sort of delve onto that? Uh, oh, this, oh, this, this is what happens when you do two interviews back to back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> too many babies. Um, my opportunity, shout out Steve Proctor. I've never actually met him, but I think he's close to you. He's got a- yeah, yeah, he's up, he's up these ways. Yeah. He, he's been super helpful. It's an t- area that I don't know very much about, but he yeah. we've chatted a couple of times. He spent... I, he gave me two and a half hours the other day of just taking me through the ins and outs of charity funding and grants. And I thought that I was going to have to run the first six month program on a sort of just scrapes and scraps and off my own back. And he convinced me that actually there is plenty of government funding out there to sort of re-energize the youth post COVID. Plus we fit into a lot of sectors of lot. We tick a lot of boxes that are, after that mean that there's some government money available again it's all new to me and i'm in the middle of i've got a stack of paperwork about that big of, yeah like, it's not my forte that side of the life so big up steve firstly for taking the time also just quickly i'm not sure if you watch it but big up jamie ramsey he's also Lon- london blader I don't know if you've seen his little kid charlie is ripping it around park yeah I, I, I called that the other day yeah it was good super cool dude he's been super helpful as well so there's Again, it, it's just emphasised the, the community nature of, I put out a post saying, does anyone know the ins and outs of the different statuses of a non-profit, um, CIC and charity and where that means with government funding. And Steve got straight in touch with me and was like, this is where it's possible, the lottery, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's, yeah. there's, there's pots available. I don't need a huge amount. I mean, so um, I'm... Just quickly, actually, we've slightly skipped over it. The, the, the charity is slightly more than just the free lessons. The, we're, we're running, um, I'm a filmmaker by trade, so going to be doing like a media section and teaching kids how to use cameras and edit. And then we're doing like a graphic design stuff. We're going to hopefully be doing a carpentry course outside of it. So the, the idea of giving these kids skills or again little nibbles at what can yeah. become passions and what can become careers later on down the line within you know skate for two hours after there'll be this optional course of graphic design film editing you know lot that many many people from within the community have said i want to get involved but, but this is my skill and i'm like sweet yeah. you've got a skill we can now impart it onto kids so that's one part of it and because of that side there's 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 funding available as I say, it's all new to me. I've not sent off any yet. I'm still in the process of deciding what status the charity is going to hold, whether it's uh, yeah. maybe getting too technical and not quite casual blading bevy, but whether it's uh, DIC, which is like an unincorporated um, sort of social enterprise, or whether it's a charity that then um, has a business faction, because I'm keen to be doing again this is maybe giving too much away with it very much just being a, a thought process at the moment not making any promises but i want to be doing a wheel um so any of the blades that get donated have a skate to create print on them okay um, big up big up mikey o'brien for doing the graphics for it um big g mike o'brien yeah um, absolutely um it's going to be doing a t-shirt we're also doing lessons um outside of the free program so parents and kids that can afford it will pick so because we've got these factions that might be making profit it makes the setup of the charity quite complicated and yes. i'm in the process of working out what setup is best to work out for that and how yeah. you can close a lot of doors by setting up wrong at the beginning do you know what do you know yeah. what i think it's great though go on but 
obviously Lewis comes from a background where he's got a lot, a lot of opportunities. Yeah, yeah. But he's going through all this stress and all this, yeah, all this fucking like paperwork. It's the one, mate. It's the one that I tell you. It's all a, this, but what I'm saying though, Lewis, is that you're going through all this. For somebody else's well-being. Well, this is it. This this is the difference between a lot of a lot a lot of sports, and I think this is what makes people who have had that pleasure of picking up a pair of rollerblades and you know interacting with groups of rollerbladers that people kind of don't get. They don't understand when you say, "Oh yeah, I'm a rollerblader. I'm a blader. I'm a skater." They they don't understand the kind of background that a lot of bladers have like everyone kind of thinks i mean correct me if i'm wrong but a lot of people think like i'm a scare oh you're just a misunderstood youth you're just a, a, a scruffy kid looking to let out a bit of aggression until you're 18 19 and then you know you'll do something else like this is the kind of sport where you get in early enough and you you're there for life and it, you know, and it's purely through these kind of experiences, and it's great that the kind of thing you were touching on before uh, when Lewis was out was, you know, the, and we mentioned it in the podcast with Greg was, bladers in general have a lot of creative skills, be it filmmaking, be it editing, be it carpentry, like you were saying, you know, hand, hands-on activities. Yeah, exactly, and and. You know, that them kind of key skills that you might not necessarily get pushed towards in school or especially in, in you know, schools where you know, kids are that. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're not thinking a long term of, oh, well, th- this kid's in a gang. He's probably not going to want to do, you know, carpentry or he's not going to want to do bricklaying. You know, th- there's little skills like hands-on labor skills that people will eat right into because it suits their 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 mindset their their social upbringing that you know you can feed that it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing you know these kind of manual labor jobs it doesn't don't don't think of them as negative these are these are productive skill sets that that kids especially in in care and stuff can really thrive off because they don't have that academic background it's a pathway into having a passion or a career. For me, it's all about opening doors. It's not about yeah, saying, absolutely. I'm going to give you a carpentry course. This is what you're going to do. It's saying, let's do two days of ramp building and see if you enjoy working with wood. Let's yeah. do two days of editing. I mean, how many, how many rollerbladers have become professional photographers, professional filmmakers? Oh, so many, especially in the professional, professional I mean, I things. You know, I've, I've spent 10 years being a documentary maker and... I picked up a camera solely because I wanted to film some tricks and that's become a career for me. That became a very, very evident, obvious way that I can make money or not so much money because it's documentaries slash quick, um, quick little, you know, buy my documentary links. Well, it's my, a passion. It's a, it, you know, it's something you're, you're interested in, yeah. not, not just solely for the money. You know, it's, One it's thing. something you really enjoy. And that, that, that stems from, yeah. from rollerblading. Many, many One thing I do want to say is obviously Lewis, you come from a London background and a London community. You know, obviously people with well-being, and we're talking about people with not the opportunities and the rollerblading side of it, and where rollerblading has helped. If you look at like the likes of like Jack Groves, Jack Groves, Jack Groves is a great kid. Great guy, you know. I think I think I think the world of him, you know. I think I've, you know, me and Jack have always got along. We've we've always had a laugh. We've always got like banter to talk about. There's always something nice, you know. He's he's a most lovable guy, and I think if it wasn't for the likes of yourself, the likes of the guys from On My Grind, that type of that type of love, that type of fucking love, and that community in the role playing scene is keeping people alive mate and i mean that like alive jack if jack didn't have the role playing scene i don't know where he would be now, right now uh, yeah and that, and that speaks to volumes of people so that's what i'm saying so like you know obviously jack grew up around the bay 66 area 
Jack knows what it's like to live in that area and try and find a hobby, try and find somebody who feels the heart inside them to be like, do you know what, mate? I'm going to help you out here. I'm going to give you that open arms. I'm going to give you that hand to help, like hold, and I'm going to help you. Yeah. And you're you're that guy. You are that guy right now that I see. Hoping to, become, hoping to become. Yeah, no, no, no. Hoping to become because mate, I know, I know that you have the passion. I know you have the drive, and I know you have the love to do whatever you're focused on in your mind to accomplish. And I know that when it comes to it, you're going to fucking hold your hands up and you're going to go, do you know what? Look, guys, look at the fucking 10 rollerbladers I've got here. First lesson, doesn't have to be the fucking fifth. First lesson, I've got 10 guys here, five guys here who are fucking interested. But I tell you now, mate, primary schools, high schools, fucking colleges, the rest of it, you only have to have one conversation for that to spread on. Yeah. Well, our, our, our program is already full, basically. As I say, the two charities that I um, volunteer at, one of them is amazing, works with kids from opposing postcodes and works does a, like activities with them. And then the other is the uh, Paddington Trust, who works on the Harrow Road, which is right by Bay. We're, they basically said, I mean, we're not quite sure when the first program is running, but finding kids to be interested is not going to be our, it's not going to be a, a stumbling block for us. There are going to be many, many kids yeah. that just yeah. want to be around and doing something. Yeah. yeah. Before we bypass it though, um, the shout out to, uh, to Jack Groves. Shout yeah. out to you on my ground. And big, 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 big. Um, Charlie Lockyer, fucking, um, all, 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 all of them boys, yeah, because yeah. like, you know, this, like you say, the scene is strong down there. If you look at the, like them Tuesday sessions, them Thursday sessions, you know, th there's a scene down there and there's a scene down there for a reason. It's because you bring a passion and a, a love for skating and that, that's just that's quickly, cool. Just quickly, you touched on it though, but big shout out to Jason Odie, man. He, yeah, he, man. He, yeah. He's the part of the scene. Blake Bird as well will we'll compete for that. But Jason, that, the energy he brings, the, the love, the, the just the community that he brings around him what he's done you know hooking zach and mike up at, on top of a huge pro team with a new t-shirt brand and clothing brand he, he does it right he really I've he's, he's a good guy man i spent i spent quite a bit of time at winning class with him it's funny because brad paid paid for my flights but we didn't actually spend that much time <laughs> not <together>. really no, <laughs> no. <laughs> i was I was trying to sleep a day fucking yeah. with the fucking south guys like <laughs> I, I was too busy just bouncing around anyone who'd listen to me slaver on <laughs> but no, me and jason um we listened to oh fucking hell craig sumner play play piano um, yeah, in the blue blue collar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Shout out, Craig. Some of the absolute boss of the piano. But yeah, me and Jason were Jason was building a joint and we literally just fucking just chatted and Instagram we saw each other and like it was nice man. And do you know what? Like from what I see, we followed each other on Instagram from then and it's just that community, Charlie, Jason, um, is it Paulo Tool? Paul O'Toole. Yeah, so Paul O'Toole. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, the, the, the OGs in the London scene coming back is... Uh, oh, it's not about you coming back. Like, from what I see, it's never been gone. That love and that, that holding each other together is there. Do you know what I mean? And, like, this is where you're going to grow and you're going to realise... Well, not realise, sorry. That's, 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 not, that's not the word I was looking for. It's where you're going to grow and you're going to see that love become between these when you what did you call them before young like kids that are in trouble oh, and, uh, children with child, uh, challenging behavior so okay I, I yeah i just see that as my my, yeah. my, my yeah. friends <laughs> yeah yeah um, kids with challenging behavior it's not it's not going to be even labeled that in your head at all when it comes to when you see them together no, it's just another set of role yeah. like yeah. and i think lewis like Obviously, we've we've chatted on about it a lot, but like, and I explained to a lot of people earlier what you're doing and um, you know the the support for it. But what I, from from personally from myself, mate, and you know knowing you on a personal level, I think what you're doing is unbelievable, and I think it couldn't be a better person to do it. Like you are generally. Um, a most lovable guy. I, you know, you remind, you remind me a lot of Joe Harvey. Joe Harvey's a, a person. Joe Harvey, while we're at it. 
Yes. You're you're a people person. You're a, pe uh, a people pleaser. You want people to be happy around you and whatever it is and whatever you're doing, you're just doing it because, not in a way, but you're doing it because you want that other person to be happy. And that's what matters to me a lot, man, is that your personality grows a lot quickly with people because you're so lovable and so careful for people. And do you know what I mean? Shout out and bless up to you. Thank you very much, mate. I'm touched and honoured. As, as I say, it's, uh, it can be daunting starting a road of what I'm doing. I've never been a name or a known, you know, not been at the height of my game, skating, wanting to yeah. start a skate school. There have been thoughts in my mind of, am I good enough to do this? Is it, you know, and actually to hear that, you know, very gratifying. It's mate, like I, I, I um, just so you feel a little bit better on the situation, you know, I'd say we're both on par, rollerblading. I wouldn't say you're better than me, I wouldn't say I'm better than you, but I did rollerblading. Yeah, skate, that's for sure. Hey, I my ask my shirt and you can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm only, I'm only stopping you in the middle of that, Louis. Because <laughs> I did um, at Ramp Works, and you know what, I mean? I felt the same. You know, there was kids who were scooter kids to begin with, and they thought, "I'm going to give these rollerblades lessons a go." And I taught quite a few kids, and um, a lot of them progressed quite a lot. You know, some of them dropping in. I'm talking like ramps, like fucking 13, 14 foot high, and like they're doing jump boxes and stuff and doing grinds. And, you know, I taught them every week, week to basis. But to begin with, I was like, am I poaching to people that I'm this like fucking rich yeah. rollerblader? And you, the thing is with it, like with rollerblading especially, you don't have to be the greatest skater in the world. What you have to be is passionate about what you're doing mm. and enjoy what you're doing. And I think that comes across massively from what you've said, like foremost, what you've, you've started, you know, regardless of where it goes from here, the fact you've actually just got your balls out on the table and said, look, I want to give this a go. I have a passion for this. I believe there's an interest in this. I think it can go somewhere. I think we can make a real difference. That's that's the difference between. It doesn't matter if you're the, you know if you're world's best skater or just sole in a curb. I was calling a curb. <laughs> sole in a curb. Man, these hop outs are getting me. But my yeah, like, yeah. world best skater. I was like. Yeah, oh, definitely not that. <laughs> but no, I think the most important thing is that you've just got the passion for it and you believe it can work. And that's the main thing. And like the whole the reason... You know, is what fuels that. The, the people that were within blading <laughs> and blading itself is what fuels that big time. I, I, I'm, I, have the, I have my the coaches that are part of my program, Blake Bird and Sam Crofts. Maybe should have dropped that in not an hour into the podcast, but... <laughs> so I've got, I've got some, I've got some, I've got some, I've got some skills and talent to teach the kids, and then oh. I can bring passion and energy. I get that, I get that, Lewis. But it's not about the skills and talents, mate. It's, it's about, about the, pa the passion, passion and love, and the love that you're bringing to it. But it's that, yeah, it's that love that that you know this community has been very special. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate the fact you've got Sam Croft, absolute killer, Blake Bird, very, very, to me, very underrated. Like role winner for what he is like, he he's phenomenal. Be, yeah, phenomenal. He's, yeah, make, well, not, unbelievable. Not lie, it's strange being a little kid growing up in, at Bay and going there from the days of being eleven. Yeah, and now session him up like David, like, David, David Beckham of of, of blading for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Him and him becoming head coach of what I'm setting up is, is the thing is the thing is no, no, it's like you've got two phenomenal role leaders. And I'm sure there's a couple of role leaders that are probably going to be involved who are phenomenal and are known in the community. But at the same time, from what I see is that they've got that one person. And I'm not saying they don't have the same passion or drive, but that one person that started this off that has the love, the passion, and the care. Because the care is the massive part for me. It's yeah. Because it's not that you're you're doing it to better yourself or pursue a career for yourself that could potentially be a life career for in something you are interested in. But it's something for somebody else. It's something for to, to give somebody else to be like, this is something that has helped me over the years, and it's something that has helped me build the character and the person I am these like to this day. Yeah. 
absolutely. I, I can't drive that home enough. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing, and 100% never lose that. Never lose that passion, and you'll. I think you'll be fine because you you you've obviously got that drive to do what you want to do. Honestly, lads, I, I'm happiest with blades on my feet, and when I'm bringing up the next generation, so it, that passion will not be going anywhere, anywhere, anytime quick. Perfect, is, there, is there anything else you want to touch on, Lewis? Is there anything else you want to, anybody you want to give a shout out to? Anything you want to touch on before we call it a night and say thanks for coming on? I mean, there's there's lots more about the charity, but if you want to get in touch or, or, or help out in some way, um, holler me. It's Louis Deverick's on Instagram or Devro if you want to. Um, be like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Lee's brother. Don't get the wrong deck roll. He's French. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, guys. What yeah, you no, but really, I just want to thank you guys. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come on and talk about hey, it. A bit no, uh, it was good to have you on, man. Uh, I, I believe 100% in what you're doing. Um, yeah, absolutely smash it because the blade scene needs it 100%. Yeah, yeah, definitely. In time, I'm going to be bringing a van load of kids up to Rampworks for Slam Jam or whatever. Slam Jam 21, and we'll have we'll have a load of kids coming in the next generation. Hopefully, we'll be budding, but we'll see. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. good. So, but always remember, guys, that Lewis Devereux is putting out a, a community at the moment and trying to build a community and build a community that you're looking at bigger than what the rollerblading scene is right now. He's looking for donations, looking for any sort of help to help that opportunity for them kids that are not as benefited as we are as as human beings when it comes to being the age we are, obviously, because we give, we've got an income, we've got money where we can purchase skates, we can purchase parts. These kids are kids that aren't having the best income or the best upbringing, and Lewis is trying to take that off them to the point where they've they feel like they've got a better, a better opportunity and a better life goal. That's it. So remember that. And when you, when you look at the parts you've got and you've got skate parts or whatever you, you're not going to use, remember that Lewis is there and he's donating these kids and need them a lot more than us. And this is to help build the community also. Remember that, like, you know, if somebody else puts a pair of roll blades on, it's another role player in the fucking scene and it's yeah. only going to grow from there. If you love the sport as much as everybody else does, Lewis, Bradley, myself, that's one thing that you've always got to remember is that as soon as a kid puts them role blades on and they've got somebody there to support them and give them a clap along, they're always going to do it for the rest of their life. Absolutely. Lewis, it's been a pleasure and we really appreciate what you're doing, mate, for the community. And we really appreciate what you're doing for yourself because obviously we understand this is also, you know, it's also achievements for yourself, and it's also um, big life changes, mate. A year ago, back. I was living in Berlin, wanting to be a filmmaker. Suddenly, COVID has caused me to come back to the UK. Back to the community yeah. that's given so much. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, that's yeah. it. It's a, it's a piece of your heart that you're trying to pass on, mate. And you know what, mate? I appreciate it. Beautiful I stuff. Very, I feel very, very blessed to be part of the community. I feel very taken in. At, at, it's like a, I don't know. It's like a big hug every time I go skating with with. Yeah. Anyone else? Awesome. It just is a. It's a. We're we're all very blessed. Is what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. To be part of something with like-minded people is, yeah. is very special, and a lot of people don't have that. Well, Lewis, it's been a pleasure having you on. Yeah. Lads. Taking the time and the effort to come on and talk to Ginger Person to start to start with. That's appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> but bless up, love you lots, mate. And, Keep doing what you're doing, man. It's uh, enjoy your podcast. Look forward to what you're coming. What, what you've got coming. Thank you very much, mate. Same Take it easy, man. Take, Take care. Bless, bless. Bless, bless.